a personal accomplishment to ensure that the zoo does no, no longer exist. That that very animal enclave, that animal kingdom, that shapeless place created by white people, adopted by black fools and slaves, those of them that their brains don't quite function properly. We are here to ensure its destruction and the zoo will fall. When I mean that Nigeria will disintegrate, I am not just talking about the emergence of Biafra and then the remnants will continue as the zoo called Nigeria. The name Nigeria will no longer exist. The same way they removed us from every geography, every history book, here in London they did it in shortage, I hasten to add. Here they came and they paid the British to whitewash, to obliterate, to turn the bite of Biafra into the bite of Benin. To change everything about our people and our culture, forgetting that they, the British, came to our land and signed treaties with us, acknowledging that we are their friends. They did, not us. In the same vein, we shall make sure that the zoo called Nigeria never ever exists. Biafra will come or everything will perish. Some we say it and some idiots we are commenting on an article written by one of the newspapers in the zoo. Uh, carrying some things that I said about the zoo coming to an end December of this very year and some Yorubas of course very flippantly as you would expect them to we are making jest and mockery oh they are looking for settlements they want somebody to settle them that's why that you know typical and this was what we warned against before that is why sometimes we find it very very difficult to penetrate international community because they think we are not serious and why is that those that went before us they compromised. The lesson that Biafran people should have learned is this. When you fight for freedom and you are genuine about it, you never stop. Ordinary Scotland is not fighting for freedom. They are fighting for political independence and the two are not the same. Yet they have not stopped. Despite the fact that it was they, the Scottish, that handed themselves over to the British 300 years ago. The Scottish people voted to dissolve their own parliament and invite the English to come and take over. They still want their independence till tomorrow morning. What confuses humanity? People, our people don't know this. The reason why we have to work four, five, ten times harder to convince people, governments of the world, to believe, even to accept our message, is that they have never seen a group of people that started off fighting for their freedom, not political independence. The two are not the same. They have never seen a people who were basically fighting for their political survival, who gave all of that up to go and join those killing them. That was why Israel was very, very lukewarm about supporting any emerging Biafra agitation. They never wanted to. Because we are not serious. Everybody keeps telling us, any day you people are serious, we will know. Right now you are not serious. All you do is you talk, you broadcast, you do all of these things. Any day you are serious, we will know. Therefore, it is incumbent on each and every one of us. It is our duty, our responsibility to ensure that we convince people around the world that this time around we will never ever stop until we get what we're looking for no matter the amount of people that will die in the process that we will never give up that is why we preach this gospel the way we do that is why we want our people to understand what we are going into to fight for your liberation and your freedom is not easy especially when Lucifer himself is in charge of the opposition every known race on this very earth is against the emergence of Biafra. Not because they want to be, but because Satan has gone inside them to tell them, you have to be against these people. You must be. Because Biafra represents the coming of the kingdom of heaven upon the face of the earth. As prayed by Yeshua, that the Greeks called Jesus Christ. In the Lord's prayer it says, give us this day our daily bread. People are praying for the coming of the kingdom of heaven upon the face of the earth. So shall it be here on this very earth. Jesus Christ was talking about Biafra. Some of you will not understand this, but there are some very anecdotal, I would say, because even the British denied the existence of the hard facts. It was them that drew up the longitude and the longitudinal lines. 
latitude and longitude, the lines that run from the North Pole to the South Pole, from the East to the West of the world, trying to at least allow you to pinpoint with dead accuracy where any land, country, position is on this earth. They could not alter nature. They ran a meridian. They ran a meridian through London, not far from here, in Greenwich. That is called Greenwich Mean Time, not zero meridian. Even in mathematics, you start from zero to one to ten to infinity. But in the, the counting of the at least longitude one hour, is called Greenwich Mean Time. They are on meridian. Ours is the zero. Zero before them one. And then as you travel every hour around the world, it becomes a globe, making it 24 hours. I don't know. When the waters of the coast of the Afroland, zero longitude, in essence, that is why they will not want you to come up. That is why we will ensure that we come up. Because what we are doing is in complete and absolute fulfillment of a prophecy that these people will be set free. The kingdom of heaven will come down to this very earth. And this is Radio Biafra. My name is Nnam Kano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra across earth. They come in the, the director of Radio Biafra. Hmm. Of man, it is of heaven. Therefore, nobody else remain a very faithful servant of the indigenous till my dying day. And uh, go on and to the acquiescence and the leadership situated in the planet and people. We will fight all these demons and we will defeat all of them. Just what the end of this year, this year will no longer exist. This year we must march out. And that there is Chukwa Biyama in heaven. That is the only pop thing in the whole world that Chukwa Biyama exists. Mm -hmm. And that is God. This is very to you. Our one, our I feel a very divine mission is the truth and uncompromised the sovereignty of the Republic of Biak on truth and honesty. On truth and without truth and honesty, Biafra will not come. Although people tried in the past, um, <laughs> the answer is Biafra because they are time. All of us, our heart, are singing the church, worshipping white gods, was prevalent in our land. So, in date, our people avoided what they were meant to do and started to indulge in a level of wickedness never before witnessed in the history of by labeling some people as outcast. Something that is abominable and reprehensible before the sight of the whole Usu and the caste system, Devil and Lucifer. All this nonsense, how do you expect to be free when you have not set other people free? You grab them and looked at us and said, you people are not serious. When you're serious, we are serious. That is why we confess the whole world, that we will not leave any stone unturned in the pursuit of absolute and total half. Freedom for everybody. In Biafra, everybody must be free. When I mean free, I mean freedom from everything, everything that is not set on. Because of that, they cannot get a job. I think you must be insane. If somebody is qualified anywhere, there will be no reason. You can stay anywhere you like forever because, mind you, every child will receive the same level of education. It doesn't matter where they are. Every child will be a ward of the state. They get into university, it will be pure, free, quality education. If we don't have money even to eat, in them, we will spend money on education. Important. We will not play with our children. Never, ever, ever care of. Very much so. Because the nonsense we endured in the zoo, we cannot afford to replicate them. This is Radio Biafra. Once the barrister is able, I do so, but in the interim, I must inform each and every one of you, of course, your paper. People call me sometimes and ask me, oh, what is the telephone number of this? Get a pen and a piece of paper. You wait for them. You rather than people asking, where can I get pen? And you take down these numbers. If anything, once you do our best, to, we will ensure that we provide all the answers the right recommended barrister has come to me. Before I go to the barrister, our radio Biafra is live and interactive at this very moment as we do every evening from here. 
in London, United call is plus four four one three three nine nine seven four. I repeat, plus four four one three three nine nine seven four. The barrister will please come back to me. I don't know what I was just touching. I've, I, I've, <laughs> I've, I've cut him off, you know, um, unexpectedly or unceremoniously. He has done so. Barrister, let me finish this with these numbers and I will come to you. The numbers, once again, plus 442081339974. If you're calling us from the zoo with an old telephone, or the, world, the old phones, rather. It is 00944. It's only in the zoo that you add nine before you dial anything else. Everyone else in the world, it is 0044. Only in the animal kingdom. Don't go you. That is where you put 009. Then 442081339974. Very hard to provoke. I command all her forces. And in the same token, I will remain your faithful and loyal servant, Chuku Gikabi Amawili, now and always. I will not fail you. If there is, you may not trust yourself. You will be in the ocean. Maybe you're not a man. You may look like a man, but you're not. Because you behave like a Yoruba person, and Yorubas, they don't have men. What they have is male. Something that is born male. They don't have men. It takes something extraordinary to be a man. We are without fear before our enemies, therefore we will not fail you. I will not fail. I will never ever disappoint you. Be rest assured. We are human beings, that is true. But by the grace of Chuku Abiyama, there is no way we can go back from... No, it's impossible. Any day I do it now, I will die. Don't you know that? I will die off. And why would I leave this very noble struggle that Chuku Abiyama said we must undertake? Because it's impossible. It's because when you look at those that we are going to remember on the 30th, they fought very gallantly. They did not get Biafra. But we are going to remember them every blessed year forever. Every 30th of every year, we are going to honor them. Now, imagine what will happen to those of you in IPOB if you get Biafra. <laughs> they will celebrate you every day now. There is nothing you say in the Bible. You don't talk about Moses. You don't talk about Joshua. You don't talk about Gideon. You don't talk about um, David. You don't talk about Solomon. Have you noticed it? <laughs> there is nothing you, everybody, if there are comments in the whole world about the scriptures, Moses is being mentioned every day, Joshua every day, every day, out of captivity. The Bible is replete with getting the children of light out of captivity into freedom. Is anybody going to forget Moses? <laughs> Never. Will you forget Joshua? Never, never, ever, ever. And then the liberator, the greatest liberator of them all, the person that came to give you freedom, to commune with heaven without slaughtering a ram, Yahweh Yeshua. If you don't understand, I will use the name some of you are, because you are brainwashed names. I will call him Jesus Christ so you understand. He is the foremost liberator freedom fighter. He came to set you free, or the Gentiles at least. Or reconcile humanity with the throne of grace of heaven. The reason why we remember Yahweh Yeshua, oh Jesus Christ, and we honor him and we venerate him, we pray to him, we do. Because when you say bless you, you are praising somebody. Not worship. Praise. It of is praise. Not worship. Worship is also fair. That's a difference between the two. You can praise Yahweh Yeshua. You don't worship. Praise is different from worship for your information. I am waiting for theologians to come up with that. 
the foremost, not I wouldn't say, the foremost freedom fighter was Moses. So Yeshua came and entrenched it back in the lives and minds of people. Jesus Christ is the ultimate freedom fighter. Do you remember when he died on the cross, he said it's finished. Do you remember? That he has done his job to set mankind free. That is why we follow him. That is why we follow his footsteps and his teachings. To the best of our ability, because nobody can be like him, of course, nobody can be. But we try. That is to let you know that the world never forgets freedom fighters. They have never forgotten. It's the Shea Gavalas of this world, the Mandelas of this world, nobody, Mahatma Gandhi, nobody ever forgets freedom fighters, never, ever, ever. Oliver Cromwell in England, nobody will ever forget George Washington. Never, you can't, you can't attempt it. It's impossible. In the hearts and minds of the people, freedom fighters live forever. Because you're fighting for something noble, something more than yourself. That is why what we do is very, very special. And if you are called to serve this beautiful land called Biafra, in whatever capacity, you should be grateful. You should be grateful. Because you are doing the same thing that has been here of old. Never ever goes away. Offer a two there. watchman to help the descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to wake up and know who they are, whose they are, and what their purpose on this planet is, and also to enlighten and create awareness on what Israelites are going through all around the world. Right now, there is an alert, it's an emergency, it's an urgent alert. God has definitely used one of us to reveal what the enemy are planning right now. Prince of the East, Prince Namdekano, the Ohamadike, one of Biafra land. The individuals that selflessly decided to give his life so his people can be able to uh, enjoy the dividend of democracy. His people can be able to see the light of the day and see the rising sun that comes out of Biafra land. Right now, we all know that Biafras are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We are the true Hebrew Israelites. I want you to understand that God is definitely with us because we have at hand information that they are planning to assassinate Namdekalo during the court proceedings in October. Ladies and gentlemen, every single person that is on this planet that loves peace, every single Biafran Israelite, you must share this video. We want this video to reach over 100 million people, a minimum of 100 million people, because this is important. Nigeria is about to be set ablaze. The reason I'm saying this is that anything that happens to Ahmadike will turn Nigeria upside down. Right now, we need you to know that the saboteurs, all those evil doers, all those individuals that are in politics right now that is serving with 
Nigerian government and some of them that have already served in Nigerian government before that are all doing human rituals that are all in occultic clique with the house of Fulani they have collected bribe to get Namdekalo assassinated they want him to die that way he will not stop what they are doing or he will not stop the, the opportunity of them eating and looting and stealing the money from Biafra land. Ladies and gentlemen, they are planning to assassinate Namdekalo. You need to share this video. I am going to give you the in-depth detail proof. Ladies and gentlemen, they do not care about what might come up after what they have done, what they want to do. But the reality is that they will not be alive to see the light of the day especially those saboteurs that are among us all their investment in their foreland all their kindred in their foreland will not see the light of the day if anything happens to Ahmadike, if anything happens to the prince of the east the great prince of the east ladies and gentlemen we also know that they hide men along any expressway to get him assassinated now i'm going to play an audio video I need you to be able to pay attention, please. This is real. This is real. We are not playing with this. We are watchmen. Our job is to use our gift and talent and ability to speak out the truth that is happening against the children of the Most High. We are going to keep our people informed. God is with us. I need you guys to know this. And I want you guys to know, you guys... The IPO members and the lovers of peace and Biafras that are in Lagos, that are in Kaduna, that are in Sokoto, that are in Kano. You need to be ready because those cities are going to turn to ashes if anything happens. Those cities, you need to be ready. You need to be on guard because we are not going to stand by and get these people keep slaughtering us. And at the end of the day, they are successfully planning and master planning on how to kill our leader that has selflessly followed the rule of the law, exercised his right for self-determination according to Article Number 3 in the, United, uh, in the UN Charter of International Laws. We are doing things according to the law. The only reason that they want him dead is because he is bringing the truth to the light. He is telling everybody the truth. Biafrans France and the IPO members, global, worldwide, are saying the truth. They are supporting the truth. They are exposing the truth. Guess what? Right now, the cabal and also that useless man called El Rufai and the rest of the army officers or the useless Jew army officers in Aousa Fulani Hesmen, they are planning, as I speak to you right now, to shut down. All this east, the southeast and south south telecommunication. So you will not be able to get us the first first information of what is going on. Because the world is knowing what they are doing. All their propagandas, all the atrocities, the world is seeing it first class. All the lawsuits that we are making against them, the world, the judges. The international bodies, they are known exactly what is going on. So they want to be able to shut the internet down so they will be able to kill and assassinate Namdekalo with the numerous plans they have. I need you to pay attention to this information. Please, share this video. Share this video because there will be a time. There will be a time. There will not be an opportunity to share video. It will be a time that Nigeria is definitely going to be worse than Somalia. In, in order for us to be able to survive and save our leader, you must share this video if you are a lover of peace. Nigerian corruption has come to an end. All those evildoers and bad leaders, those evil governors, those different governors, South East and South South, they have already sold out, collected millions of dollars, and swear allegiance to the Sultan of Sokoto, I need you guys to understand that. That is why they are doing what they are doing. That is why none of them came to show solidarity to Nnam Dekalo except Governor Fayoshe. That is why they don't like Fayoshe. I need you guys to understand. Now, Odudua, Odudua, I need you to also watch this video, all the Yoruba people. You need to watch this audio video. That is going to be a confirmation that you are just the next. They have killed a lot of people, and nobody did anything about it. But this time around, 
This time around, Almighty Creator, the God of Israel, has exposed them before anything happens. Remember, what you're about to hear is going to blow your mind. Yes, but they are probably not going to end up here. Because the Bible said that seven times would they make their plans and seven times would they fall. I know that our Redeemer is it. And I know that our God is alive. Evil men has run Africa for too long. Evil Westerners has bankrupted Africa and steal and loot and kill in Africa for too long. This is a time Biafras are going to save not only themselves but the rest of Africa because 70% of Africans are Israelites. That is why God is doing this. I need you guys to understand that. Please pay attention. I'm going to see you very soon.
something occurred to me. Why did you not have a minority commission in the north? When you have the TV people, the Lupe people, the Wadi people, the Biron people, why no minority commission? Why minority commission here? It is the classic divide and rule the town oil. The only way to have access to your oil is to divide you. Very simple. If I want to come to your family and take something from you, I'll get you fighting with your brothers. You're fighting, I'll be cutting away what you have. So that was why they set up minority commission. There is a difference in emphasis because, you see, African people sometimes are a bit stupid. And I'll tell you why I think so. we are very, very daft. A change or slight variation in language does not mean you're a different people. It doesn't mean that at all. In Israel, they have Yiddish. They have Hebrew. When Christ was on earth, he was not speaking Hebrew, he was speaking Aramaic. Does that mean he is not an Israeli? Does that mean that those that speak Yiddish are not Jewish people? Does it mean if you speak Hebrew, you don't belong? So why is it that when you speak Hebrew, you speak a John, you speak a thing, you're different? But in Israel, you have... La Casera defies court order, fails to reabsorb, sacks 700 workers because there's no law in the zoo. People say, oh, we are going to court, we want to go to court, there is no... There is no law in the zoo. People don't actually appreciate what is going on. When you tell people that studying law in the zoo means you're wasting your time, they don't appreciate it. There is no law. That is why Buhari can wake up and determine who is going to be arrested. He can wake up one morning and say, I want to remove the president of the Senate. And that's it. That's as simple as that. Share every senator 11 million each to sack him. That is how the reason that it, there is no law in it. You don't go to court in a place where there is lawlessness, where they don't know what the law means. You can see them maybe wearing gown and wig. These are monkeys from Africa. They don't know anything. Their brains are empty. They know nothing. Lawyers go to court. Police can drum up charges against them and fabricate lies. A lawyer will go to court and cannot be able to free the people. The police are allowed to get away with impunity upon impunity. Evil upon evil. That is why when they die, nobody mourns them. Nobody cares a police person who is dead. Some people say good riddance. I'm telling you, that is how evil they are. There is no law in the zoo. A court of law gave ruling that a company should reabsorb workers but of course, due to bribery and corruption and decay within the system and also the people, the company is flouting the rule and telling them to go to hell. That is how sad things have become in the zoo. We are also reporting this very day that judges caught on camera in Ghana collecting bribe. It triggers an uproar in Ghana by touching the zoo. In Ghana, you see, it as poor as as wretched as they are, at least they have a little bit, tiny bit of conscience. They can do something, they can react. But in the zoo, if you're a judge and you don't take bribery, you're not a human being. Bribery is what tells them that you are alive and that you're kicking, that you're a human being. Judges court, you know, it's black. I told you about black people, didn't I? It, these are black. That is why Biafra can never resemble any black country. Heaven forbid. I say, Chukwa Biama forbid that we, after going through all this pain and suffering, Biafra land will become like any other useless black African country is impossible. Absolutely impossible. Judges are caught on camera in Ghana collecting bribe. They say, oh, why don't you go to court? Please go to court. Black people don't know the meaning of white man's judicial system. Instead, they envelop it with fraud and with corruption. Fraud and corruption. That is because the mind of a black person in Africa is fraudulent and corrupt. That is why we are predisposed to evil. That is why Africa is not developed. Because people do not reason very well. I keep telling them, you don't reason like human beings. Why are judges collecting bribe in Ghana? In the zoo, they are, in fact, if you don't bring bribe to the court, the judge will even order, uh, give a bench warrant for you to be detained. Very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. We continue with reporting. 
The restriction on vehicular movements will be observed during the Idel Kabe celebrations throughout the state. All movements using vehicles, bicycles and animals like horses, camels and donkeys in Medigree will be restricted as from Wednesday 5 p.m. 23rd of September 2015 because those are the means through which they convey bombs and weapons, and they are scared. They said they have won the war on terrorism. All of a sudden, they are also very scared. Seven days after the National Industrial Action ruling, the management of La Casera Company PLC has yet to comply with the order to recall the sacked 700 workers. M Mr. Mike Oladen Waji, the head of the Education Department, National Union of Food and Beverage and Tobacco Employees, confirmed to newsmen that the management had yet to recall the sacked workers as directed by the court, because nobody obeys the court in the zoo. What is the court in the zoo? It means nothing. It means where people go about and bribe each other and just come away with nothing. Even in Ghana, their corruption is now also escalating. Why they found oil? Why? Because <laughs> an Awosa man, Dramani Mahama, is in charge. I'll remove the word John. His name is not John. His name is Dramani Mahama. He's an Awasa man. He's in charge. There is oil. The British loves Awasa Flanagan. Anywhere they find oil, they make sure in West Africa, Awasa Flanagan man is in charge. So that way they can take as much oil as possible. Some Ghanaian Jesus are presently faced the wrath of the people for, because some of them were caught on camera taking bribes. According to AFP, hundreds of angry Ghanaians. That's why these people are very, very good, you know. Ghanaians can come out to protest, but in the zoo they just open fire. Uh, they have in one voice thrown out to see the public screening of a long-awaited video capturing judges and court officials allegedly taking bribes. Earlier in the month, the news came out with 22 circuit judges and magistrates affected. They were said to have tried to disrupt the broadcast of the video, but all attempts failed and the footage lasting several hours was finally shown on Tuesday evening, September 22nd in, in Accra. The video was put together by an investigative journalist who has written a petition to the Ghanaian president, Dramani Mahama, to remove the judges. Investigative journalist. In the zoo, they just sit in the office. Oh, okay, where is your brand envelope now? Which news you want today? They'll just write, oh, Atiku said everybody should stop it. Is that news? Go and investigate who shot dead. Three indigenous people of Biafra on the 30th of August. Go and investigate... How come Willie Obiano took delivery of live ammunition, arms, arms, to government house at Oka? Find out how come police are going about harassing people. Factually, journalists, not sitting in your office and collecting money, useless, useless people. We elected um, President Buhari to govern Nigeria. No matter how he feels about Igbo, democracy requires somebody. If democracy and the benefits of democracy can be actualized, you have to follow rule of law. No matter how impatient, no matter how militant, it, 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 it takes a lot of guts and wisdom to follow rule of law. Why? Because even if you have a desire like Mugabe to be on the seat forever, we are meant to expire. When you die, somebody else gets in there. So it is imperative that you create a good record. So that who, somebody who comes after you can build on it. That's how nations are built. So no matter how impatient you are, you must endeavor to follow the rule of law. I admire the Attorney General when he challenged Nan the Kano's bell. And uh, he documented his utterances, he do documented his uh, featuring in crowd as grounds for invocation of that bell. What made uh, Buhari's uh, government to feel that the court would not rule in their favor? Do you know how much we could have saved that as a society? by waiting for the court to rule 
That court, if they rule, if they don't rule in your favor, you could go on appeal. That's how democracy works. You get him rearrested, you put him back in jail, and continue to run your country. The military adventure, we had a no wire. And the jubilation I see in some section of the country is kind of childish. Because it brought us back. It was not the kind of, I don't even know, you guys are giving him too much credit. So, because of Nande Kano, the armored vehicle that you just bought recently, that some of us thought would be used in fighting Boko Haram, was dispatched to Umwaya. And the military, Nigerian military, an institution that belongs to the country, the present uh, chief of um, army staff or defense staff, they will eventually go and somebody else will stand on that seat. Even if you say that perpetually it will be my brother, at some point God will make you, you will have a brother. It will be somebody else. That's why it is imperative that it doesn't take advanced intelligence to know that you must nurture a military as an national institution. No matter how the urge, what the urge is, don't privatize it. Don't make it a kitchen cabinet. Don't make it a tribal army. Because if you do, that's the failure. That, that will be the beginning of the failure of the country as a nation. So to send that army, a national institution, to go and hunt down a civilian in a celebrated, uh, what was missing in the arsenal was intercontinental missile. Other than intercontinental missile, to go after Nandekano, I saw jet fighters. I saw uh, armored vehicles. Uh, I saw the ship was even sent to Portugal. Well, have you, as a, a conservative leader that you claim you were, have you sat down and analyzed the costs? A country in depression? And, and I'm speaking now to people like Tunubu educated uh, minds like Sanusi, why wouldn't, if you really so badly need to arrest the colonel, why wouldn't you ask the commissioner of police to pick him up? That would be cheaper. That would be easy. So the, the West I, 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 is unjustifiable. And the celebration is unjustifiable because we are living in a very volatile African environment. The oil we sell has markets. The Europeans we deal with, including Britain, they join sides, not out of love, but out of interest. If another section of that country can find another interest that will be willing to sponsor in order to cash out at the other end, you will have confrontation. And the people who will be fighting you will not necessarily be unarmed, stick-throwing evil boys. If you go to Port Harcourt Wharf, you can see that our, the, the people who are buying most of our, our oil are international crooks. 
in order to sustain their market, they can sell weapon to a group to get direct access to cheap oil. So when you hunt these unemployed youths into their hands, they will find a team, a partner. The crooks with, that come with oil tankers, if you chase unemployed Igbos into their hands, they will find willing partners. And Nigeria will burn. So, I want you guys to stop laughing and jubilating that you go to Umwayada. Can't you look ahead? Are you guys so myopic that you don't look beyond your immediate environment? Come on. I'm very disappointed. Really. And uh, to correct this situation, if you do take advice, because I'm not omnipotent, I take advice. Speak to Modo or Hanese. Don't call it restructuring, but I have the willingness to govern all Nigerians. I wouldn't tell Ibos to beg you to be governed fairly. I would not. I would not. And if you're expecting that, then I don't want to cause you up. If you're expecting Igbos to come on their knees to beg you to be long to the country, then that's a sad uh, development. Okay? But remember that these uh, unemployed youths that are being gone down and uh, people are celebrating it. The ones who are not gone down could become a cashier for international criminals who are looking for a place to pinch their tent. And I don't want that to happen to Nigeria because I know that we have many problems. But I also believe that if we can reduce political corruption and reinvest that money, that our economy can improve for everybody. If we can reduce insecurity and if we can institutionalize our army so that they know what their role is. Within the same army, we have ambitious people, you know, who are going there to make it overnight. If everybody is in the make it overnight gear, we will never be surprised. Because if everybody is in the make it overnight gear, then the pharmacist will be selling poison instead of tablets. Tylenol. The doctors will be yanking out uterus instead of self delivery. And the presidents and senators will continue to go to England where people who treat you tongue their nose or sometimes close their nose when they get close to you. Okay? So, making it overnight is not the way. Let's work together, create a country where our youth will have a sense of belonging. No politician is thinking that way as of now. And that's where I'm hurt by uh, the, the, the chief of um, staff. Texas and United States of America, my name is I thought that he would be spending his energy of the wonderful to push of the I politicians to say into doing the, here with us, the uh, public service for which they were elected. The chief of staff army has a lot of power. The, um, we were but he so is using it childishly. Can't you see how much well the politicians are costing the economy? To have him with us, us broadcasting from his house today. We are very, very delighted that this is Radio Biafra coming to you from Texas in the United States of America.
Thank you. from Israel. Israel. Uh, Israel. 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 Thank you very much. Radio Biafra is broadcasting live from Corpus Christi in Texas in the United States. We left Atlanta. Yesterday was yesterday we left Atlanta. We are in Texas now broadcasting to the whole world. So how are you people doing in Israel, please? We are fantastic anyway. We are fine. That is, I hope the spirit of unity and oneness is still going ahead. Is that correct? Um, it is a directive that all the friends who are uh, um, uh, agitating for independence of Biafra must no. come under the protection of the Council of Elders. You can... All over the yeah. place. There are people in America here who are holding down 19, 24, 25 jobs. There are 24 hours in a day. Some of them have 25 jobs. But um, some of us are dedicated to this struggle, fighting for the restoration of our pride and dignity as a people, of which you are leading excellently well and very formidably on the legal front. We cannot thank you enough for the work that you're doing. We are indebted to you. We all owe you a debt of gratitude for the work, your selfless sacrifice and devotion to this struggle. And uh, as they say, um, the reward is not even here on this earth. It's perhaps in heaven because the work that you are doing, the only person who could possibly reward you is the almighty God himself. Because if you look upon some of our people to reward you, you might end up highly disappointed. So we are asking you to be of courage and be of good mind and be of good health that we are with you all the way through. Thank you very much. I know that this is just the beginning of the struggle. Remember that um, we all we all wanted is to satisfy the requirements of international law. International law says any people that want independence must start from their own jurisdiction. And if they are denied if they are denied justice, then they can come to international court of justice. So we still have options. Even if we want to go out from Nigeria, we go out from Nigeria. They say we have not exhausted the option. Nigeria has not rejected us. All the courts will tell you that they want the ABA amendment to be made. So, it, it, yes, even though we cannot say, okay, Nigeria has uh, decided to deny our justice, and we now go to international court and, and file it, I think it is too early now. And we have started, this, this case started only six months ago in January. It was in January that this case was mentioned, and it is due. Only six months. Yes. But remember that Cameroon was in Cameroon was in court for twenty years battling with Nigeria over and watch what what's been going on um in West Africa, man, in the country of Nigeria. So this video is, is basically standing in solidarity with um the family, um the Biafrans, aka Evo people. And the genocide that's been carried out on Igbo people in Biafran land, Igbo land, by the crooked, imperialist, uh, puppet Nigerian government. And I promised that I was going to make this video for a couple of people that, you know, my Igbo people, man. I love my Igbo people, man. They always uh, supported everything that I do. Um, they support my videos. They support my messages. They support my work. So it's only right that... Um, I support them, and this is video is basically just a wake, uh, wake up call for my people here in um, the United States Empire um, in North America, because I know many of my people are not aware of what's going on in Nigeria right now. And this is also for global Africans all across the world who watch this video. Um, I'm speaking on the behalf of all of those global Africans to get educated on what's going on in Nigeria. It's very, very, very important, man. So. I stand here today coming from Virginia and, and why Biafra is so important to me and the Virginia connection is because of the slavery, um, the slave trade. Many of y'all probably don't know that uh, the majority of the Africans that were, you know, kidnapped and taken out of the, uh, West Africa came from the Bight of Biafra and the Bight of Bonnie in Nigeria. So a lot of the new Africans and Africans black people in America, uh, you're related to these people. This is where your ancestors came from. So that's another reason why I'm making this video. 
um, like I told you before, at least one of us, uh, at least at least one of your ancestors is Igbo or somewhere from that region of Nigeria and Cameroon. So that's why I'm also making this video. Just to educate our people, man, and this is so important, man, for all the people across the world that's being oppressed and that's struggling and fighting for self-determination and, and statehood and nationhood, and especially our new Africans here, right here in Republic of New Africa, um, within the United States of America, man, I advise you to do your homework on what's going on right now. So let me just get to the point, man, because I can't make this video uh, too long. So, you know, this is a solidarity with my Biafran brothers, uh, my Igbo brothers and sisters. Just to let y'all know that you have brothers and sisters in North America, across the United States, that's watching what's going on with y'all in Nigeria. We're watching what the Nigerian government and the crooked President Buhari is doing to y'all. We're watching. You have, you have family over here that's watching and, and stand with y'all. As you see me today with my red, black, and green bees that I always wear. See, a lot of people think these bees are just about Garvey. They think it's just about uh, the UNIA, but many people don't know I wear these bees because of the ancestry of the Igbo people and by our friend and nation. So let me get right on to it, man. Let me get this point clear, man. Study self-determination. Self-determination uh, 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 of a people is a human right under international law. And what does this law state? This law states that the rights of people to self-determination is, is their right to freely determine their political status and freely pursue their economic, uh, social, and cultural development as a people. The self-determination is a human right. It's under the Article 1 of the UN Charter, 1945, man. Go research that. And I just emphasize that point because a lot of people are not politically educated on what is self-determination, man. Uh, this is a human right. You see what I'm saying? And these people, our people, our brothers and sisters, human rights are being violated in Biafra, man, in Nigeria, by the Nigerian government. They're being murdered, killed, all because they want to return to what they were which is a nation state, the Republic of Biafra, which is being led by a, a brave soldier by the name of Nandi Kanu of the IPOB, Indigenous People of Biafra. These people are under attack. They're being murdered because they want to be free. 